Hi, this is Sandy Babb, and I'm coming to you from my studio, and I wanted to do an update on my self-imposed junk journal challenge of three journals for $20 of supplies from Dollar Tree. And I have the first volume done. You can see it is a chunky monkey. It's about three and a half inch spine because it got so splayed it was going to kind of burst out there. So I um, thought I would give you a few of my pros and cons on this project and explain why that I'm going to drift off my own self-imposed challenge on the next two. Um, so um, this is the book that I bought from Dollar Tree. This is a portion of the vinyl bag some of the baker's twine in the chamois and the um, book spine I had to take the book apart and the uh, pieces in here are the back of one of the paper tablets and so that is basically all I did to the book there is no um, cover decorations and I'll explain that later decided I wanted to try to do something for the spine and I didn't have a lot of um, things left so I took a piece of the sheer ribbon and kind of shredded it and some of the baker's twine and some of my binding material and made sort of a little tassel and took a piece of the vinyl bag and a book page and stitched it to look like a leaf. And there's one of the paper beads that I made. I did snitch this brown bead out of my stash. I, I cop to that and I also snitched three gold paper clips out of my stash and I just have this paper clipped in here so it can be taken off if someone doesn't want to use it or doesn't want it on there um, which I, I say someone it's gonna be me and I'm gonna tell you why I can't in good conscience give this journal as a gift because of the paper. I feel like the paper in this book is not quality paper. And I'll show you what I mean. So here is the beginning of the book. I used one of the manila folders to cover the inside. Some book pages and washi tape. And um, washi was one of my studio tools that I chose to add color to this book. This is the sticky notepad. This is one of the cards that I bought. Uh, from the card set, a little pocket with a couple of little um, the file folders and just little papers and things. Now, I will tell you the book pages that you see in this book are cheat. When I bought my book, um, I didn't look at it very well. And when I got it home, I realized it was really, really, really laced with profanity and some subject matter that I didn't want in my book. So I just threw the whole guts of that book away and I used some scrap book pages that I had in my studio. I just substituted the book pages. So these are all from the book pages you see here. There's a few dictionary pages, a few um, thesaurus pages, a few um, um, Greg shorthand pages. They're all from textbooks. And so I did make that substitute because I wasn't happy with the subject matter. The other tool I chose for my studio was um, the sewing machine and some thread. I did a zigzag stitch to unify the book and to add some color throughout. And there's a tab made from one of the cards. Um, this is um, a part of an envelope, so it's a little tuck in there. This came out of the bulletin board kit. And I put little journal prompts on here. She wished. Like, what do you wish for? So you could, you know, put wishes, hopes, and dreams on these pages. Um, this is one of my cheats, the, the dollar package of um, butterfly clips from Hobby Lobby. And this just has a tag. It's covered with the... Um, sticky note paper and book page, the chamois, and I just hand cut a circle and made a button and tied it with some of the baker's twine. And it's, you'll see lots of these little flags in here and the little daisies I cut from the color book page. The centers of the daisies were punched out from part of this kit, um, the bulletin board kit. Um, this is the bulletin board border and covered it in 
the note paper and book page and a couple pieces of washi. And here's another one of those little um, books that came in the bulletin board kit with another journaling prompt on it. Um, I've got just some writing tablet paper with stitching and the daisy. I didn't do anything to any of the coloring book pages because they could just all be colored on a tab with the button. Um, a little ruffles um, paper ruffle and a button, more little flags. This one I stitched into a book. I put some washi on the spine and stitched it and then I cut um, paper. So there's a whole little tablet here of writing paper inside there. And of course left plenty of journaling space. There's This is one of the butterflies from the um, gift bag that was cut out of the gift bag to use for a tag, a tab, excuse me. Um, another little book, a little uh, pocket with a pull-out tag. The tag is double-sided, so you can write on both sides of it. Have a little hidden journaling there. Um, more writing paper. Um, I tried to keep everything cohesive by kind of lining things up, you know, in as best as I could. Um, a cutout from the color book, and then this is just a little tag that's clipped on here. Has some writing space on the back. This is a ruffle that's a tuck that has a little writing space also. The book pages, I did use gesso on these, a light coat of gesso, so you can write right over the um, words, and it doesn't it doesn't compete with each other so here's another piece of that chamois and just um, things that are punched out of various and cut from various papers that I got from the Dollar Tree this is where the scrapbook paper comes in in my haul video I showed a little pad of scrapbook paper I had in a couple of big pieces and what I did with those is they're not actually used in the journal I just stuck these in that you could write on them and to give the journal some color um, so they're not, you know, actually, they, I didn't make the journal out of them. Another one of the cards, this is the flip up corner tuck. You can journal there as well as on the book page. This is a little butterfly embellishment I made. And on this one, I just decided to use it as sort of a tab. And then I've used it in a tuck spot in a, color, a couple other places. This just has a couple little writing um, things little tiny this vinyl is from the um, the vinyl bag and then these are just little pieces that I'd cut off just you know scrap pieces more of those uh, gift bag butterflies you'll see those all throughout here this could this ruffle could be a tuck if you know oh, it was a tuck I guess everything fell out of it so I say it could be a tuck there I had some paper tucked in there I guess it fell out and more um, just journal spots, another tuck with a folded paper and a tag. And a ribbon tab there on that page. This is a pocket from one of the file folders and this is a piece, this, I put another pocket on top of that pocket. This is a piece of the bulletin board um, um, whatever edging, I don't know what exactly what it's called. More little things to journal on. Um, I'm not going to pull everything out because it's basically all the same. This one is um, more of a library type pocket made out of a dictionary page and just a tag to um, write on. This one's a little pocket with a notepad in it. And if you pull it out, this is made from the um, blue um, ribbon, wide ribbon that I got at Dollar Tree and the this is a piece of the file folder with the washi and I put the sticky pad on the front and the back and then I also glued five or six sheets on the inside so that it can be um, written on and you can have some hidden journaling and you could even do the journaling how you do it, you know, around square. This is a little um, banner um, or garland that I cut out and turned one of those into a tuck and this is the other side of the envelope that you saw in the front that was a tuck and it has a little tiny notebook in it 
This is made from one of the mailer envelopes and a book page and washi tape and just some of the white paper for a little notebook and just some pencil drawing around there. And I did do pencil drawing around all my little scallops and everything is hand cut. I didn't use any punches. I didn't use any, um, you know, fancy scissors or anything. I tried to keep it pretty stripped down as far as tools and things go. This one has a tab. This, this is from the vinyl bag. Um, the tab there. Now this piece of paper, I had to use two pieces of this paper. This was off of a legal pad that I have here in the studio and the reason I had to use it is because somehow through all this brushing around, I managed to get two of the pages dirty. They were white paper so I just covered them up and let it go. And there is quite a gap in the seam of this, and I don't really like that, but it was the only way I could get the book to lay right. So I just embraced the imperfection, put some washi, and let it go. This is a vinyl pocket um, that's made from the vinyl bag. Some more of the little scrapbook papers just to write on. A little tab up here. Um, this is one of the little bottles of glitter. I ended up not using this glitter because it's so fine. When you get it out, it sticks to everything. It won't go back in the bottle. You can't save any of the extra. So I ended up using the bottle of glitter, one of the paper beads, the edge of that wired ribbon. I used the um, the um, ribbon, the, the wire part to wire this together and a little piece of my sheer ribbon and then I did snitch this this out of my studio because I didn't have any other clips or anything so but that made at least a little charm or dangle and you could always use the glitter if you want to but I just found it a little hard um, this is a um, mailer and I just cut it in such a way that I could bind it into the book and it wouldn't you know uh, mess it up and I don't have anything in there. This is for, you know, just putting keepsakes or whatever. Um, but I um, did do that. A little hand-torn paper flower. And um, this is one of my cheats. I used about a three-inch piece of this vintage grass cloth wallpaper. And it's that, that three-inch strip is three a three by eight inch strip and it's spread between three books so and this is the back side of the sticky note pad I just used a pencil to draw a leaf and freeform cut a leaf out um, and another little button and butterfly and more little flags and I tried to put words in here that were edifying this one says kind um, tried to, to, to put journal prompts and edifying words throughout the book another corner tuck with another folded paper and another book journaling thing and this does fold up so you can write on there more um, coloring page and regular paper um, this one has a little tuck with a little tag in it and then on this side it has a notepad this is just a little Notepad. It's got five or six sheets of the sticky pad in it. That's just a little for a little hidden journaling. Good, nice journal spot there. Another, and I didn't mean to get these two so close together. I didn't realize it until I was flipping through that I put two of these. You know, you like to kind of spread things out, but um, um, another flip up journaling space, and you've got plenty behind. You know, and this is a tip in. It has it's a pocket with a double sided card. And then a journaling spot on back and another place to journal here. And if I've done a lot of boo-boos or no-nos or whatever, y'all just please be patient with me. This is my first actual junk journal. At the end of this video, I'll show you one of my journals compared to this so you can see how vastly different. So this is my very first try to junk journal. Um, file folder pocket with... Um, more journaling space, more paper. This is a little um, pocket that I did. It has a little envelope and all these tags are backed with the little writing paper. Um, just little that you could write little memories on or little things. And then I left one side. You can leave both sides of this open. I just left one. Tuck two little tags in there. So that's a lot of little journaling space. 
another pocket with some just pieces of paper in it to write with. Um, this is the front of one of the cards. And I turned it into, it's got a tuck spot here, which is just a plain card to write on. And then there's a hidden notepad underneath it. So there's little writing spaces there. Another little tab. Another handmade tag. This has got one of the little rip flowers and paper ruffles. And some of these I backed and some of them I didn't. It just I guess it depended on my mood. Here's the other side of that um, pocket from the uh, file folder. And just another blank card for journaling. And more coloring book pages and gift bag butterflies. And um, this is another piece of the bulletin board border. And, you know, I mean, like I said, I tried to keep it unified by using the same elements and repeating colors and patterns. Um, this is the one where I use the butterfly as a tuck. And it just has a little folded paper that you can write on. Oops, I got my, oh man, I got my ring stuck in that butterfly. Uh, sorry. Um, more writing space. I don't. Oh, that didn't even go on that page. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I think this was actually clipped to this page. This could be a tuck here if you needed it to be, but I just had another um, tag. And a lot of these embellishments, I did a couple of embellishment videos, and I'll do a third one for the ones that were not covered. I know that this little deal here was covered in one of them, I think. I can't remember. I'll go back and look. There are a few of these embellishments that were not covered, and I'll do a quick little video on those. Um, more book page. Another um, keepsake envelope. Here's another one of those little um, jars of glitter, and I did the same thing here. And like I said, I stole the paper clip from my studio because I didn't have anything else to use. It does give it a little charm on the side. And now we're entering into our third section. I may have to put some glue under that one piece of washi there. It does not want to stick down. Um, more of the bulletin board thing. And you could even journal down this, which I thought was kind of fun. Um, another pocket with just a card in it. Oh, God, it, that's a single pocket. I don't know if it was double or not. I can't remember. Um another little pocket with a couple of tags. These are exactly alike, just one small, one's large. And they tuck right back in there with a little book page tab. Another journaling spot. This one has a little journaling spot behind and it's a tuck for a small tag. And then more journaling behind and more and another flip up. Another little pocket that's decorated with the chamois flower, and this is just a little tag that's in there. It's got washi and sticky back paper and the envelope and the um, baker's twine. It's got a little color book. It's got a little bit of everything on that. Um, make sure I'm not scooting out of frame. Like I said, a lot of this is just a repeat. I tried to be repetitive. I had an extra card left. I just did a tuck with that. So you can just write on that. This is an envelope that's a flip up and you can have some paper for writing in here, a tuck underneath, and then another little banner. This just has a little tag that I tucked under there for writing. And I just kind of left my twine loose and just stringy, I guess. Um, another little tuck here with a tag, a piece of paper, and some journaling spots. Plenty of writing space. Plenty of writing space in this journal. Um, another pocket tuck and another tag. I think this one maybe, yeah, it's covered on the back. Man, I use this little sticky pad at like crazy. I mean, <laughs> It was, it was a little nuts how much I used that, and here it is again. Um, okay, I left the back of that one plain. I must have been getting tired of making tags by that time. And then this one, you can tell I really got tired of making tags. I just stuck a piece of paper in there <laughs> under the butterfly tuck. Um, and then just stuck another little 
piece of paper there for, you know, writing. Another little handmade tag with the ruffle tab. And then the another flip up. A tuck and a flip up for writing. And this is one of my favorite ones is the butterfly tablet. I love this tablet. I just love it that you can you have so many pages on both sides that you could just journal on your little butterfly. And it is a flip and you can journal here and then you've got a couple of folded pieces of paper to journal in here. And that's the end of the book. And I was going to explain to you why um, I ran out of stuff. I wasn't really sure what to do with the covers. So the cover's playing. When I was doing this journal, I thought this was going to be so much fun. And it was. But I can't in good conscience give anyone this journal. And I'm a little afraid to use it myself. Because I did do Dollar Tree items. This paper tears. I mean, even where the binding is, it wanted to tear. Even though I used my book jig and punched, pre-punched all my holes and everything, it just did not want to bind well. And especially this writing paper. If I was going to do it again, I would have doubled all the paper like did two pieces of paper together to give it some thickness. And even if I want to write on this, I'm going to have to have something, some kind of surface behind it in order to write on it. So I don't know. To me, this, this was, I'm looking at this book as it's an education. I learned a lot about junk journaling, um, even terms I didn't know. Um, and I learned some do's and don'ts and I came out with a project I'm proud of um, I can't say that at some point in time some of this would get torn up and redone into something else I'm not quite sure but I do know that I don't feel comfortable with the book because I'm afraid of the binding because the paper's so thin so that's what I meant by the next phase of this challenge in the next two books, I'm going to use everything I got at Dollar Tree, but I'm not going to use the paper. I'm I'm used to making journals with uh, more of a mixed media paper or sturdier paper or um, doubling paper where I, I know it's sturdy. And I don't know what I was thinking when I did this. I really wasn't. I was kind of a little overwhelmed. This, this was a little overwhelming for me. Um... And it's mostly these, these paper, this paper here, this line paper is really thin. But even the the white paper is not too bad. This is maybe a little gray below copy paper. The coloring book paper is not bad at all. It's a nice thick paper. This isn't real bad, but it's the. I think if I had it to do over, I would certainly do more. Um, I would double the papers. I really would. So, I said at the end of the video, I was going to show you one of my other journals. Let me grab this one because it's close. I do do book cards, but as you can see, if I put these side by side, they look a little different. <laughs> Guess which one is not like the other. I normally do something like this mixed media book that these are I use a lot of found objects. I use a lot of metal. I do a lot of beading. I do a lot of painting. Um, so you can see that these don't look anything alike. And this is actually an old, this old gas thing that went on a, I think it was a tractor or something, that I found at my grandmother's. And I found this piece of metal. And you can see that it has lots of beaded dangles and things. And I'll show you a couple of the pages. Um, these are all hand painted. Uh, my pages are hand painted. Everything on here is hand painted. And um, these are little tags that pull out of the spine um, that are in here that are hand dyed and stamped, inked, all that. So I'll just do a kind of a fast so you can kind of 
see what I mean by my books are, are more mixed media type books. So this was a different beast for me. You can see these are these are real vintage ledger. I mean, really old receipts and stuff from the 1800s. I mean, very old papers. I use a lot of vintage items in there. So this was really a learning experience, and it was fun. But um, I'm going to try to do something a little different and better on my next book. So that's the flip flip through of what I'm calling the chunky monkey. And in my spare time, I'll start working on the other two, and I'll get to that other embellishment video. So thank you for watching.